Lots of games have very surface level, arcade, fun oriented mechanics, but some go much deeper, trying to make things granular. And while fun is still part of the equation, a lot of it is about setting up a situation in which you have to learn something very involved and your success at it is incredibly satisfying. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 games with incredibly deep mechanics. Starting off with number 10, probably the most obvious possible entry, Microsoft Flight Simulator. If your definition of depth in a game is how realistic it can be, then Microsoft Flight Simulator is easily one of the deepest games out there. Though it can be played by basically everyone when you have all the flight assists turn on and you use less complex planes, when you turn all of the settings to be as realistic as possible, the game can be as difficult and complex as actually trying to fly a plane. A perfect example of how complex this game can be is its communication systems. There are fully modeled air traffic controls and certain aircraft that normally require multiple people to properly pilot can be flown solo, which means you have to juggle the engineering portion of the plane, communicating with air traffic control, of course, and, you know, flying the plane. On newer model aircraft, it's easier to do, but on older craft, the less intuitive controls are accurately replicated, and that makes basic tasks less difficult. At number 9 is Escape from Tarkov, the originator of the popular extraction shooter subgenre. This game isn't particularly complex conceptually, but in terms of mechanics, it's completely nuts. Like, just dealing with the inventory system can be mind-boggling for new players. Ammo and clips function just like in real life in this game, so any ammo left in the clip is manually transferred to a new clip, or a, uh, like a half-empty clip, uh, if you want to save inventory space. You could also just throw them away and waste a bunch of ammo if you really wanted. Uh, the controls, just as complicated in my opinion. The mouse wheel is used for much more than melee attacks in this game. You use it to control how fast you move, how low you're crouching, you can fold or unfold a stock, you can manually blind rifle. Like the amount of options for movement in Escape from Tarkov are mind boggling and often make the game feel a lot more difficult than maybe it would be with just standard controls. That said, it's also one of the deepest shooters out there, mechanically speaking. And number eight is EVE Online. Now, MMOs are pretty complex already just because of what they are, but EVE Online is a game that takes that baseline depth and uh, just blasts right past it out into space. Get it? There's a reason the game's often referred to as an Excel simulator, because there's a lot of numbers to keep track of, and spreadsheets are usually the best way to do it. Like, the game was already incredibly in-depth in terms of space simulation back when it first came out, but the level of depth is out of control at this point. The economy by itself is incredibly complicated and entirely dependent on other players. Like, look into the amount of conflict in this game and the level of depth of the gameplay is obvious, so much so that it can be very intimidating to new players. Like, there is so much going on at any given time that you're not actually going to be able to keep track of it. Again, making spreadsheets very useful, but depending on your focus, like a spreadsheet probably won't even actually keep track of it. At number seven is Divinity Original Sin 2. Now there's tons of RPGs out there with a lot of options, but not a lot of depth. Divinity, not one of those games uh, at all in any way, even a little. Uh, on the surface, there's the expected level of complexity for games like this with, you know, lots of options for class, race, stats, abilities, etc. Uh, but that's the easy part. Where this game gets really in depth is the many, many ways you can interact with the world that are just not immediately obvious. Like how you can hurt on dead with healing, but you can also heal them with poison, which is fantastic if you've got an undead companion. Also, undead isn't just like, this enemy's a zombie! Because yeah, there's similar dynamics to that in other RPGs, but there's also more to just every aspect of this. You can spread water and use ice on it to create a slippery surface. You can set fire to oil to create a blazing inferno. And that's not the only thing that fire does. If you cast fire on water, you create a vision obscuring cloud of steam, and you can cast a different spell onto that steam to make it into poisonous fog. And hey, you know what you could probably do with that poisonous fog is heal your undead companions. Get what I mean when I say it's it's more complex? Uh, that's just an example of the sort of thing you can do in battle. Outside of battle, just as deep too. 
do. Every single NPC can be killed in the game, and they'll show up as a ghost that you can actually talk to. Uh, that's not all you can do to someone, though. You can also kill their ghost if you want. You find a chest you can't open, just take the whole thing. It goes right into your inventory. You want to pull a sweet scam? Sell all your crap to somebody, take the money, and then steal all your crap back. Like, as far as mechanical depth, there's few RPGs with as much going on as Divinity 2. And number six is RimWorld, kind of a cross between The Sims and Prison Simulator, uh, with a lot more going on. RimWorld is a game with a high level of complexity, but you're free to engage with as little or as much of it as you want. The ultimate goal of the game is simply survival, because each pawn has their own personalities and flaws that can lead to disastrous outcomes if you aren't able to keep everyone's needs taken care of. It can be a brutally difficult game, and just figuring out the interface and figuring everything, you know, that isn't the interface out, I guess, as well. Like, there's so much figuring things out in this game. It's, it's a challenge on its own. But the game is more about just seeing what happens, and it's usually hilarious because there are constant failures. And eventually they just get so funny they can't possibly sting as much as they would otherwise. And number five is Path of Exile. Like, look at any of the most popular Diablo-style action RPGs, and you look at games with a lot of depth. There's usually a lot going on with these games, right? You got the various skills, your loot, your additional mechanics, etc. But by far, the deepest and most complex of these games is Path of Exile. Like, look at this ridiculous skill tree. That is where the game starts, and it only gets more complex from there. Instead of having simple skills you unlock, you you get skill items that can be inserted into your equipment, like a uh, an overcomplicated materia system from Final Fantasy VII. The game has been going strong for years and years, and they keep adding new systems and making things even more complex. These days, it's really almost impossible to get into the game without at least a few visits to the game's wiki, especially if you want to get into the end game. And number four is Slay the Spire. Not every game with depth has to be a huge sprawling thing. Sometimes even something as focused as a card-based roguelike is still incredibly deep. The main thing that makes this game stand out is how many possible strategies there are. It's a game that really forces you to think about every card you use and how they synergize with one another. It's not a game with a ton of trap builds you can fall into. Like, there are a lot of builds that are viable, and certain builds are clearly better than others, but so much work that it can actually be tough for a player to figure out what a good build even looks like. Slay the Spire is one of those games that's both really focused, but also very deep. There's a reason it's so popular. There's just a lot there to keep players coming back to. And number three is the Virtua Fighter series. For anyone interested in getting into fighting games for the first time, it can be shocking to discover just how deep these games can ultimately be. Watch any fighting game, and it can really kind of seem like there's not a whole lot going on. It's two characters wailing on each other, right? But there's also just tons going on underneath the hood. If you want to play competitively at all, you have to know all of that stuff. Pretty much every popular fighting game has a ton of depth, but by most estimations, the deepest, most complex, and overall difficult fighting game is actually Virtua Fighter as a series. The most obvious sign of depth to the frankly ridiculous move list, every character has a bafflingly huge selection of moves to pick from, far more than anybody could possibly use consistently. Consistently. The game isn't about mindlessly mashing up combos and picking the right counter pick. There's just a level of strategy involved that you don't normally see in other fighters as counterattacks and punishes are really important. Like, I'm only scratching the surface here, but to make a long story short, there's so much going on in Virtua Fighter. Yeah. 
And number two is Crusader Kings 3 and pretty much all Paradox games. Uh, the grand strategy games of Paradox Interactive exist in a very specific niche, but one that's proven very profitable for them. You'd think a bunch of games as deeply complex and intimidating to newcomers wouldn't be as big as they are, but these games are huge in more ways than one. All of their games are really stupid complex, but the most obvious, uh, it's Crusader Kings. In them, you play as a king, regent, duchy, duke, basically any part of an empire or kingdom at any level. You can control the smallest of city-states, the biggest of empires, and from there, you're basically free to do whatever you want. There is no real end goal. You pretty much decide what happens by building your empire and figuring out what to do with it. Even at the highest levels, it's almost overwhelming the number of choices you have to make, and you're not just worrying about a kingdom, you're also playing a character who can live and die, so that's a major concern as well. It's a huge juggling act that can be overwhelming even to, like, the most experienced strategy players but if you want to get lost in a game there's few games as deep as paradox's catalog And finally, at number one is Dwarf Fortress, often heralded as the deepest game ever made. If you're interested in complex PC strategy games, you've heard of this, right? The concept's similar to hundreds of other city builders out there, but what makes it stand out is the incredible level of simulation on display. Almost everything has some kind of simulation model behind it, and nearly everything that happens has an effect on everything else. This can lead to some pretty crazy and unexpected effects, like this story from PC Gamer about cats getting drunk. Basically what happened is the creator of the game programmed the taverns, and obviously having taverns where dwarves can go to get drunk is pretty standard stuff, but something weird started to happen uh, in that cats started to get drunk. The reason this was happening was they programmed the beer to spill occasionally, and that beer would create puddles, and that would get the feet wet of anyone who walked over it, and that includes cats cats walked over the puddles. The cats are programmed to clean their feet, so they were inadvertently drinking beer and getting drunk. That's just one little interaction in the game, and there's thousands of them going on at any given moment. It's a tough game to get into, visually particularly, but it's one of the most interesting PC games of all time, and one of the deepest games ever made. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Race.